Hi, it's Katrina. The age of dinosaurs was full of terror. Dinosaurs lived in fear of massive crocodiles, shocking diseases, and marine monsters. Here are some of the scariest things that dinos had to deal with. The Killer Croc 95 million years ago, a crocodile of absolutely behemoth proportions ate a dinosaur. And scientists have now found the remains of that dinosaur inside the prehistoric crocodile's stomach. This crocodile was a resident of Australia during the Cretaceous period. In fact, most of the famous dinosaurs that people know about today live during the Cretaceous. It was really the height of the dinosaur era. T-Rex, Stegosaurus, Brontosaurus, all the coolest dinosaurs hung out in the Cretaceous. And some of those dinosaurs wound up being eaten by far more ferocious river reptiles. The discovery of this fantastic beast happened near the Winton Formation in central western Queensland. Scientists came across the partially crushed remains of the crocodile in fossilized form. But what struck them as curious was the fact that there were smaller bones from a different animal mixed in with the crocodile's bones. Researchers had to gather all the remains and take them back to their lab. But soon, they had answers. A team from the Australian Age of Dinosaurs Museum identified these smaller bones as being from a juvenile ornithopod. They don't know exactly what species the ornithopod belonged to, only that it was an herbivore. Ornithopods were an ancient group that included creatures like duck-billed dinosaurs. You're likely more excited to hear about the prehistoric crocodile, though. The freshwater monstrosity was a truly devious predator. Scientists called it Confractosuchus saroctonus, and in English, the name translates to the broken dinosaur killer. This particular specimen was over eight feet long, according to Matt White from the museum. However, Matt said the killer crocodile would have been able to grow far larger. And while scientists say the amazing crocodile likely didn't specialize specifically in eating dinosaurs, it was an opportunistic feeder. It wouldn't have passed up a chance to feast on a dinosaur trying to take a drink out of its river. And now for number eight. But first, I want to give a big shout out to Direct Dan and Ice Queen Empress. Thanks so much for watching and supporting this channel. If you are new here, be sure to subscribe and join the family. Santa J. There was once a serpent so big and so dangerous that dinosaurs feared it like the plague. The serpent is called Santa J. Indicus, and it had a hunger for dino eggs. Snakes have been around a lot longer than you might believe. For 100 million years, snakes have slithered across the world feasting on unsuspecting victims. Thanajay lived 67 million years ago, and the very first specimen was discovered in 1984 by Indian scientist Dananjay Mohabe near the small village of Doli Dungri. The fossilized snake was found with its coils spooled around three preserved dinosaur eggs. There was no mistaking what the snake was in the midst of doing when it died. Its body perfectly encircled a crushed egg with its head poised to grab another one. Clearly, the snake infiltrated the dinosaur's nest and started eating its eggs. But before the snake could finish its meal, something happened and the whole scene was buried under sediment. Which dinosaur do you think was unfortunate enough to have its eggs stolen by a voracious snake? I'll give you a hint. It was big and vegetarian. Scientists inspected the preserved eggs and soon identified them as belonging to a sauropod dinosaur. Sauropods were the biggest land animals that ever lived. And the most famous sauropod was Titanosaur. Nobody knows exactly which species laid these eggs, though it may have been either Isosaurus or Janosaurus, adults of which could grow to around 75 feet in length. They were also covered in bony armor that protected them from predators. The sauropods were invulnerable to snakes as adults, but their eggs and new hatchlings certainly weren't. Even though Santa J. Indicus was only about 10 feet long, it managed to eat dinosaurs by getting them while they were very young. What took down the T-Rex? There was once a dinosaur so ferocious and so ruthless that even Tyrannosaurs were afraid of it. This dinosaur was so brutal that it stopped the mighty T-Rex from reaching its potential by bullying its ancestors for millions of years. This is all according to a study surrounding the recent discovery of a truly giant predator. For the second time in North America, paleontologists discovered the bones of a Carcharodontosaur. Carcharodontosaur was a family of dinosaurs who were bigger than life. 
true giants who didn't have to fear anything. Amazingly, the new species found in North America is totally unique. Its bones were found with help from paleontologist Lindsay Zano at North Carolina State University. From a random eroding hillside of dirt in Utah, Lindsay discovered the preserved skeleton of Siat's Mikirorum. S. Mikirorum lived 98 million years before today, and in comparison, T. rex lived 65 million years ago. The two dinosaurs never met, yet S. Mikirorum had a significant impact on the tyrid lizard's later existence. Researchers say that S. Mikirorum was so big and so unstoppable that it hunted early tyrannosaurs relentlessly. At the time, the T. rex's early ancestors were significantly smaller. Many of them were only the size of dogs, but they were still dinosaurs just early on in their evolution. You could think of early tyrannosaurs like monkeys before they evolved into humans. Tyrannosaurs didn't evolve to become big until C. F. Mikirorum went extinct. It kept eating them for millions of years, significantly slowing their development. Wrath of the Insects Forget everything you know about what killed the dinosaurs. There is now evidence to suggest that instead of an asteroid, it may have been a devastating insect army that wiped out all the dinos. Don't get me wrong, an asteroid was definitely involved. Scientists know beyond a shadow of a doubt that there was an asteroid impact 66 million years ago, but that may not have been the only thing at play. Experts are now theorizing that an important contributor to the ultimate demise of dinosaurs was a rise in the insect population. New evidence has shown that as insects evolved, dinosaurs came under siege by their buzzing wings. As dinosaurs struggled to survive the asteroid impact event, Rampaging insects were killing off survivors by infecting them with diseases. Dinosaurs hated insects even more than humans do today. There is one big problem with this theory of extinction by sudden impact. Professor George Poynter Jr. from Oregon State University said dinosaurs declined over millions of years. They didn't all die at once. The time frame, according to George, is inconsistent with the effects of an asteroid impact. The asteroid didn't help, but it wasn't the nail in the dinosaur coffin. Around the same time that the asteroid hit the planet, insects started to thrive. Scientists have found examples of biting insects from the late Cretaceous preserved in amber. Some of these insects contain the pathogen that causes leishmania, a disease that's still around that can affect reptiles and humans. Other biting insects were found to cause malaria, another disease that affects lizards and humans. And in dinosaur feces, scientists have found nematodes and protozoa. These are two things that would have caused dysentery, the very same affliction that caused so many pilgrims to die on the Oregon Trail in early America. To sum it all up, dinosaurs rightfully feared bugs. Studies have shown that they were plagued by ticks, lice, flies, and mites. So, all of these together, spreading diseases, could have wiped out entire populations of dinosaurs. Giant Dolphin Sea Monster Scientists have discovered a giant dolphin that hunted dinosaurs. It wasn't a particularly adorable creature like modern dolphins. It was more of a sea monster with an insatiable appetite that only dinos could satisfy. The scientific name for the newly discovered predator is Thaletoarchan sarophagus. In English, the name means lizard-eating ruler of the sea. It was somewhere around 28 feet long, prowling the oceans of Earth for 160 million years. Scientists think it ate creatures that were smaller than it, and also creatures that were far bigger than it was. The dolphin monster had a giant head and massive, terrifying teeth. Most of its fossilized remains were discovered in Nevada in 2008, dating back to 244 million years ago. This formidable creature belonged to the family of ichthyosaurs. They were marine reptiles who started out as land creatures and then evolved into dolphin-like predators. Oddly enough, whales evolved the same way. Whales were initially land mammals, but there was something that drew them into the sea. As they spent more and more time in the water, their legs turned into flippers. It took a very long time, but that's how many of the largest and most frightening sea creatures evolved. You're likely wondering how a giant dolphin could eat dinosaurs. There isn't any concrete proof that ichthyosaurs actively hunted dinosaurs. However, they were apex predators in the ocean. They were the rulers of the seas, 
and also the coasts. Any large dinosaur, silly enough to go for a swim, would have ended up as lunch. It was large marine carnivores like this one that made land dinosaurs so scared of the water. The Sneaky Predator There was once a very sneaky animal, kind of like a possum, that killed dinosaurs and ate them. Even in the world of the Cretaceous period, mammals were formidable foes. Scientists discovered the fossilized remains of the dinosaur Sitacosaurus lugiatunensis, preserved in its final moments of life. Perhaps you've heard of it? Researchers don't know how it happened, but somehow the dinosaur and its killer were preserved in the middle of their battle. Part of the dinosaur is being ripped open by the jaws of the strange opossum. The opossum's clawed foot is holding down the head of the squirming dinosaur. It's not a particularly shocking scene as this played out every day in the prehistoric world. It was all part of the circle of life for dinosaurs. The thing that shocked scientists was that normally, dinosaurs were on the winning ends of these battles. This was the first time that scientists discovered the opossum-like mammal eating a dinosaur bigger than itself. When people think about dinosaurs, they imagine the biggest and the baddest. But the prehistoric world wasn't all T-Rexes and titanosaurs. The prehistoric world was full of creatures from the microscopic to the humongous. And on the lower end of the scale spectrum, there was constant war between mammals and dinosaurs. Our robustus was the opossum-like creature I've been telling you about. It could grow to the size of a badger, making it one of the biggest mammals of the dinosaur age. Even still, it was able to take down Cetacosaurus, which grew nearly seven feet long. The dinosaur had sharp claws and a powerful beak, but it was still no match for the clever mammal. Flying Monsters there were creatures that were so big during the age of the dinosaurs that they ruled the skies like dragons. Just imagine winged reptiles so ridiculously big that they could swoop down from the heavens and snatch dinosaurs away for dinner. They were like eagles snatching bunnies, but on a far larger scale. The biggest flying animals that ever lived were Asdarkid pterosaurs. They nested on this planet 66.5 million years ago, just before the asteroid impact and the plague of bugs. Out of all the different species, arguably the most terrifying was Hatsigopteryx. Scientists found fossils of the creature in Romania's Transylvania region, not far from where Dracula once terrorized medieval villages. Now, let's break it down piece by piece so that you understand how big of a horror this animal was to dinosaurs. The biggest Hatsigopteryx had an impressive wingspan of nearly 40 feet. It also had a wide skull filled with powerful muscles for chewing. Its neck was thick and muscled, measuring about 5 feet long. Its proportions were so massive that its discovery came as a big shock to scientists. Nobody ever thought a creature of such immensity existed alongside dinosaurs. Researchers believe that Hatsigopteryx could have easily picked up medium-sized dinosaurs in its claws before flying away with them. Any dinosaur as big as a modern horse could have become the unexpected prey for this prehistoric dragon. Dino Diseases Dinosaurs had to worry about their health, just like humans do today. But most people don't know that 77 million years ago, dinosaurs were getting cancer. In the badlands of Alberta, Canada, scientists discovered the fossilized remains of a horned dinosaur. The creature was a medium-sized dinosaur that was closely related to Triceratops. It was called Centrosaurus apertus, and it was an herbivore that lived alongside the vicious Tyrannosaurus rex. Alberta is one of the premier places for fossils in Canada. Finding a stout plant eater with horns wasn't unusual. The strangeness came when scientists tested its bones. In a fragment of shin, scientists identified advanced bone cancer. It turned out to be the first case of malignant cancer diagnosed in a dinosaur. Scientists are now struggling to figure out what it all means. Could dinosaurs have been using the microwave too much, or did they take up smoking 77 million years ago? Unfortunately, scientists don't have an answer. But they do know that dinosaurs suffered from a wide variety of infections and diseases. Dinosaurs even had respiratory infections. 245 million years ago, marine reptiles suffered from a prehistoric version of tuberculosis. They had bone infections, and they likely got sick frequently. 
And now, scientists know they got cancer as well, but they still don't understand how. Dano Sukis, 80 million years ago, there was a monster that feasted on dinosaurs. Scientists at the University of Iowa just proved that Deinosuchus was one of the biggest dangers to dinosaurs in North America. Researchers from the university recently published a paper claiming that Deinosuchus may have been the largest crocodilian that ever existed. It prowled the wet coastlands of North America between 82 and 75 million years ago. Each of these ferocious reptiles could grow to almost 40 feet in length. And because of their incredible size, they outweighed most of the biggest predatory dinosaurs. They may have been nothing but crocodiles, but they were the baddest beasts in town. Paleontologists studied a whole heap of dinosaur fossils that were found in the ancient coastal area. Then they were able to match bite marks on dinosaur bones with the teeth from Deinosuchus. This was enough proof for them to say that Deinosuchus definitely feasted on a lot of dinosaurs. It didn't just feast on dinosaurs, though. It terrorized them. Just like modern crocodiles, it would have lurked around the edges of bodies of water. And when a dinosaur came to drink, Deinosuchus was like a reptile jack-in-the-box springing from the murky water. It had teeth the size of bananas, easily ravaging any dinosaur that got too close. Its name even means terror crocodile. The word crocodile, however, is a little misleading. Researchers say that Deinosuchus was more closely related to alligators. It also looked nothing like an alligator or a crocodile. It was a reptilian monstrosity that scientists say didn't look like anything alive today. Thanks for watching. What would you stress out about if you were a dinosaur? Thanks for watching. Be sure to stay tuned for extra content you might have missed. Tyrannosaur Embryo Fossils A recent discovery of baby tyrannosaurs shows that some of the largest predators started life about the size of a chihuahua. National Geographic reports that the fossils of an itty-bitty foot claw and a lower jaw belong to tyrannosaurs still in the embryonic stage. The little bones were first overlooked, but after a 3D scan and reconstruction, paleontologists could see that they were baby tyrannosaurs. This is the first time that we can piece them together to see what they looked like. The babies were one-tenth as long as grown dinosaurs, measuring about three feet long with sharp teeth. While three feet might seem huge, they were tiny compared to 30-foot-long adults. Based on this size, the eggs were probably about 17 inches long. Before this discovery, no one really knew anything about baby tyrannosaurs. Turns out that mothers probably were nesting in the same areas as other species of dinosaur, and scientists are hoping that there are more that might be hiding in museum collections. The search is now on for little fossils. Thumb Spiked Iguanodon There's still a lot of information we don't know about the extinct creatures that once dominated our planet. One look at the Iguanodon and you may see exactly why these prehistoric creatures were ones to be feared. A very distinctive feature of the Iguanodon was their enormous thumb spikes. When the dinosaur was first discovered in 1825, paleontologists believed the conical bony spike was set into the dinosaur's nose, like some sort of rhino horn. Maybe it was like a rhinoceros iguana. It wasn't until a more complete iguanodon was found in a Belgian coal mine in the late 1870s that the horn was found to belong to the dinosaur's hands instead, like some sort of hooved mitten. But what exactly was the spike used for? Originally, most believed that it was used for defense, possibly to attack other dinosaurs who posed a threat like some sort of weapon. But when put into practice, this would actually be really difficult. The iguanodon would have to be right in front of its attacker, in close range, and the attacker would have to be standing still for it to have any effect. Maybe they used the spikes to combat one another, or perhaps used it more like a tool to break into seeds and fruits, dig and scrape branches and bark off trees. Perhaps it was everything. Living 135 million years ago during the early Cretaceous period, the Iguanodon would have had to stand up to some pretty ferocious foes. It's believed they may have traveled in small herds and could even run on their two hind legs if necessary to protect themselves. Dinosaurs had ticks. Looks like ticks bothered dinosaurs tens of millions of years ago. Tiny fossils preserved in resin and amber dating back to the Cretaceous period show blood-filled parasites, including ticks, with pieces of feather possibly a dinosaur feather or a primitive type of bird. Scientists aren't able to pinpoint the exact host, but modern birds can be ruled out since they appeared 25 million years after the age of the amber. 
A lump of amber from Burma had an engorged tick that had just finished a meal before it was caught in tree sap. This one was eight times its original size. Jurassic Park is getting closer. Although don't get too excited because DNA is pretty fragile, and the process that creates amber is really extreme and unlikely to preserve it. These amber finds were some of the first that proved that parasitic insects plagued the animals of the Cretaceous period. Spinosaurs Remember when we thought the T-Rex was the most intimidating dinosaur out there? But then in Jurassic Park 3, that huge vicious dinosaur fights the T-Rex and we learned that there are scarier dinosaurs that existed, like the Spinosaurus. While there is much debate as to how the Spinosaurus was portrayed in the movie, it inspired many to learn more about it. A fossilized Spinosaurus was unearthed from 95 million year old rocks in Morocco, and instantly its unusual shape set off a firestorm in paleontology, with suggestions that the dinosaur may have even been an excellent swimmer. Spinosaurus is famous for its enormous size and large sail on its back connected by spines. Measuring 49 to 52 feet long, it weighed 6.4 to 7.5 metric tons. The Spinosaurus had a paddle-shaped tail that helped it slice through the water. It would float like a crocodile waiting for prey. With most initially believing dinosaurs were solely land dwellers, the Spinosaurus was thought to have lived near water and dined on seafood, using its cone-shaped teeth to snag slippery fish. But the discovery of its paddle-shaped tail containing long spines and bony projections on the vertebrae showed that the Spinosaurus could possibly have spent more time in the water than originally thought. Surprisingly flexible, the tail also had long chevrons at the base that allowed the animal a wide range of movement. By comparing the Spinosaurus to other theropods, researchers could see that they had stiffer tails, which suggested their tail shape evolved over time. Dr. Paul Sereno, professor of paleontology at the University of Chicago, says that when Spinosaurus was on land, it probably avoided other large predators. But in a fight, whoever got in the first big bite would usually win. In the Jurassic Park film, the Tyrannosaurus got in the first big bite, and with a bite force of 3.5 to 23.5 metric tons, the T-Rex should have bitten the Spinosaurus head off. Yikes. Majungasaurus preyed on its own. While it's not difficult to imagine dinosaurs battling one another, you wouldn't assume that any one dinosaur would turn on its own kind. But when it comes to the Majungasaurus, the discovery of one of the dinosaur's fossils with tooth marks from another Majungasaurus shows that nature has pretty much always been scary. Greek for giant lizard, the Majungasaurus roamed the Earth in the late Cretaceous period from 60 to 70 million years ago. Weighing in at one ton and stretching about 20 feet long, the dinosaur had a short blunt snout and a spike on its forehead. Native to Madagascar, the dinosaur wasn't necessarily a cannibal, but the discovery of Majungasaurus bones sporting Majungasaurus bite marks proved that they did hunt down their own kind. But was it a result of a lack of food, or did they dine on the carcasses of dead siblings? It's hard to tell, but with so much competition for food, the Majungasaurus probably couldn't afford to be too picky about its next meal. It might not be the habitual cannibal, but every now and then. The Majungasaurus also had another unique feature. They had to replace their entire set of teeth every two months. Similar to sharks, this meant that they were able to grow replacement teeth much faster than other meat eaters. Was this because their teeth would dull down so quickly because they were gnawing on so many bones? This find makes the Majungasaurus that much more of a fearsome predator that even their own species need to keep a watchful eye on. Bat-like dinosaur in China More than 160 million years ago, in the forests of ancient China, a tiny dinosaur glided from tree to tree. A new fossil found from a feathered dinosaur with large membranes on its arms is evidence that this dinosaur had leathery, bat-like wings. A member of a group of non-avian dinosaurs, the Ambopteryx, is providing researchers with insight into the evolution of flight among ancient animals. The first dinosaur that was ever found with bat-like wings is the Yi Qi, whose name means strange wing. Discovered in 2017 in a village in northeastern China, researchers originally believed it was the remains of an early bird. But as the excavation continued and the remains were removed from the rock, scientists realized that it wasn't a bird and instead an omnivore who ate both plants and animals. The Yi Qi was about the size of a pigeon and had long bony rods on each of his hands that extend from the wrist that seemed to support a membrane like that of a flying squirrel or a bat. But there were still skeptics as to the origin of the Yi Qi and the strange bones that jutted from its wrists. Paleontologists believe that it could be there to prop up a large winged membrane, 
but it wasn't until the fossil of the Ambopteryx was found that this theory could be proven. Discovered with the fossil was the preserved remnants of a brownish film on one wing that researchers believe could be traces of the winged membrane, Fossilized feathers and fused tail vertebrae that anchored the tail feathers, like in living birds, were also found. By studying the bones, researchers could determine that it would have been well suited to glide among trees, with feet that allowed it to perch on branches. Even though it might not seem that terrifying, given the fact that this species only weighed a few hundred grams, the winged bat-like dinosaur would have been a shocking sight to see. A tail with a sonic boom. Another impressive and terrifying dinosaur belongs to the sauropods, and it's known as the Apatosaurus. Considered one of the largest land animals of all time, they weighed up to 45 tons and measured about 70 to 75 feet long from head to tail. They had massive pillar-like legs and a long tail that it swung by shifting its weight or stomping its feet, and when it did so, it would have created an incredibly loud and obnoxious noise. Its length allowed the dinosaur to be able to crack a supersonic sound similar to a bullwhip. The males of the species may have tried to outdo one another when competing for females and would crack their whip-like tails to impress them. Or the noise would serve as either a warning to a predator or to other fearsome sauropods challenging them. To prove their theory, paleontologists created a model tail of an apatosaurus using aluminum, stainless steel, neoprene, and Teflon. The model, which stretched 12 feet long, was only one quarter of the size of a sauropod tail, but it was still able to produce a distinctive crack that could break the sound barrier when whipped around. Bone-breaking tail Although the Ankylosaurus probably couldn't kill the Tyrannosaurus rex, new research suggests the club at the end of the dinosaur's tail could have definitely broken its ankles. Canadian researchers set out to prove their theory by examining CT scans of fossilized tails from dinosaurs of different sizes. By combining images with measurements of the dinosaur's backbone, they determined the Ankylosaurus could swing its tail in a 100-degree arc, making an effective club that could generate forces strong enough to crush bone. Scientists speculate that the heavily armored Ankylosaurus used their tail to fend off other dinosaurs. Using the CT data and three-dimensional computer modeling, scientists studied whether this club and their tail could be a weapon. By calculating the volume, mass, and impact speed of small and large club tails from dinosaurs, researchers found that the tightly interlocked vertebrae of the bony ball on the end of the dinosaur's tail could generate between 364 and 718 megapascal of impact stress, more than enough needed to break bones. Juvenile Ankylosaurus didn't have a knob at the end. Their tails slowly developed as their armor did. By looking at rib fractures among adult Ankylosaurus, researchers found that those with more broken ribs could have been competing for mates and bludgeoning one another with their tail clubs. Even though this research uses fossilized remains to create hypotheses about these ancient animals, paleontologists continue to study to see if the club tails of the Ankylosaurus family were just for show, or if they were used to bludgeon other dinosaurs in the test for survival. Dinosaur with no arms 70 million years ago, a carnivorous dinosaur known as the Carnotaurus roamed. Unknown to science, until they were discovered in the mid-1980s, these dinosaurs were part of the Abelosaurus family, who arose in the mid-Jurassic period from horned ceratosaurs. Known for their long, low bodies and short heads with upturned upper jaws, the dinosaurs had a somewhat pug-faced look compared to other theropods. They had short, stout teeth and small arms. The Abelosaurus had front limbs that were so small they may not even have been visible outside the body. The Carnotaurus had a tail vertebrae pointed sideways in bony projections that grew out and upward in sharp, sickle-shaped designs. It also had a pair of horns above its eyes, and because of their strong neck muscles, it's believed they used their horns to deliver fast and powerful blows in combat between other Carnotaurs, or possibly to show their dominance over their territory, or to garner breeding rights with the female species. Even though the Carnotaurus had remarkably tiny arms, the dinosaur was well-suited for head-to-head -head combat. As paleontologists studied the shape of the dinosaur's tail vertebrae, they found that they would have been quite fast, proving that even the more stout dinosaurs had adapted to use their traits to their advantage. World's Largest Raptor In 1991, a paleontologist and his crew were excavating a bone bed outside of Moab, Utah. It was filled with dinosaur fossils dating back 125 million years. While they were excavating an armored dinosaur called Gastonia, they found the front jaw from a theropod, a class of dinosaurs that includes carnivores like the T. rex. 
Later on, they found a large curved sickle claw that they believed belonged to a velociraptor, but this one was twice as big. Dubbing the dinosaur the Utah Raptor, scientists worked to uncover the mystery of these large predatory carnivores, estimated to stretch 23 feet long and weigh around 1,000 pounds. Putting together the story of the raptor was tricky, but after comparing another batch of bones from a different dig, they were able to piece together what it looked like. After combining bones from various dinosaurs to piece together a better version, scientists realized that the claws on each hand of the Utah Raptor had been specialized for cutting. The teeth of the front and lower jaw angled forward, further than other raptors. It makes sense considering the Utah Raptor was a carnivorous dinosaur, and in studying various dinosaur teeth, Researchers found that the species used a grip-and-rip feeding style, meaning the dinosaurs would bite and pull backward, letting their teeth do the work. With recent discoveries connecting related dinosaurs, including the Velociraptor, Allosaurus, and Deinonychus, evidence suggested that the Utah Raptor would have been covered in feathers, and that they were pretty thick and stout. Scientists are now hoping to preserve the quarry where they were found as a state park in order to look for more amazing dinosaurs. Thanks for watching! What did you think of these exciting new discoveries about dinosaurs? What's your favorite dinosaur? Let me know in the comments below and be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. See you next time! Bye!